Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. Guy remembered so you don't have to. And welcome to another edition of WTR, AKA, was that real? This is where we look at TV shows that may be forgotten by some, but remembered by others for just how strange they were. With that said, have you ever wanted to see a show about cowboys that were actually cows? Of course not! That sounds like the plot to a Happy Meal commercial. But they did it in the Cowboys of Moo Mesa. Up on the mesa, above the clouds, there's a world of heart. For an idea that sounds like dead hamburger on arrival, there was something that strangely drew a lot of kids to it. And it shouldn't. It's an awful idea. They sound like rejected villains from the Ninja Turtle toy lineup. Actually, that's kind of what they were. Their creator, Ryan Brown, was a big part of designing several Ninja Turtle toys. In fact, the Cowboys of Mumesa even make a few appearances in other Ninja Turtle projects. Now, chances are it was a similar setup as the Turtles, with the toys being made at the same time as the show, as they rarely looked that much like the original characters. But the strange thing is, I never knew anyone who played with the toys or even admitted to watching the show. It was just kind of a strange thing to confess to. But a lot of kids must have watched it because it got renewed for another season. Granted, that's only two in total, but for a kid show back then, that was still pretty impressive. So why the hell did so many of us watch it when we so easily could just change the channel? Well, first of all, it had a surprisingly badass theme song. I'm usually not a country person, but this song was actually kind of fun. Up on the mesa. Even the opening sucks you in pretty fast. A flaming comet, a mountain exploding from the ground, cowboys on horses with lightning striking. Though you tell me if you can make sense of what they're trying to explain here. Comet breeze, the mesa to the western skies with the sound of a thousand cattle drives. A chosen few would see the light and find the wrong with right. What the fuck does any of that mean? What the hell does it have to do with bulls on horses? There was a comet at the beginning of time, it crashed into Earth. Fucking cows! Makes sense to me! Maybe this was like the Flying Spaghetti Monster's first draft. Another thing that might grab your attention is the cow in Cowboy is actually an abbreviation. For what you may ask? Like it says in the Code of the West. Like it says in the Code of the West. Like it says in the Code of the West. Like it says in the Code of the West. Like it says in the Code of the West. Like it says in the Code of the West. The Code of the West says. The Code of the West says. The Code of the West says. Enough! Okay, apart from this line being repeated as much as with great power comes shut the fuck up we've heard a million times, why the hell do they need an abbreviation for cowboys? They're fucking cows! Isn't that the whole idea? Is the thought that the real cowboys of the West were outlaws and these are lawmen so it wouldn't technically be correct? We're watching a show about fucking cows! Nobody's gonna care about the historical accuracy! As the Code of the West says- oh, SHUT UP! Who the hell even wrote the Code of the West? Is it like the Declaration of Mood Dependence? Is it to separate the cows who ride on horses and the cows who are actually roped and branded? Yeah, there's actual cows and bulls that they herd in a cattle drive. So what the fuck is going on here? The most I can gather is from this one line. Since the comet done come down And raise Moo Mesa from the ground We walk, talk, and ride like all the great so, the comic caused an evolutionary shift? So that some cows and horses are people while others can be ridden and most likely eaten like other animals? They're fucking goddamn cows! Why the hell am I thinking so hard about this? With all that said, you'd think this show would be really painful to watch. And while it was really corny, there was also kind of a bizarre creativity and energy to it that, for a kid's show in that time period, didn't make it half bad. It centers around our lawmen, Moo Montana, the Dakota Dude, and the Colorado Kid. Looking after a town full of other pun names like Lily Bovine, Cody Calf, and Cow Lamity Kate. The mayor of the town, Oscar Bologna, just stick with it, is in cahoots with another villain named Sheriff Terror Bull. Trust me, just stick with it. Who terrorizes the town as the masked bull, dealing money and hatching up schemes to get the corrupt mayor more moolah. First off, it's nice that there's a kid show that's actually a western again. They used to be everywhere a long time ago, but then they kind of went out of style. So, even if it had to come back in such a strange way, it was kind of nice to see. But one of the reasons western kid shows aren't seen as much is the heroes oftentimes have to use guns, which in PC times is very frowned upon. Their way around it? 
they don't use bullets. Yeah, their ammo actually all uniquely connects to their personalities. For example, the marshal shoots golden stars, the sheriff shoots a whip, and the gamblers shoot poker items. It makes as little sense as anything else, but again, it was kind of creative. But connecting to their personality traits leads to another strength of the show, their personalities. Yeah, a lot of them are cutouts, but even as cutouts go, they were kind of entertaining. The Dakota dude was funny in his minimal dialogue. He appreciates a lady who could teach him something. Yeah. And like his old school mom. Yeah. Taught him everything he knows. Sure did. Calamity K was a cool cowgirl with a dictionary of weird insults. You spat hooved sidewinder, drop whiskered, stripy pants, son of a gun. The mayor was a lot of fun in how politically corrupt he was. Lose something, Calamity. Like maybe uh, everything you own. And even the kid, as kid characters went back then, wasn't really that annoying. A sleeping deputy can't avoid bad dreams. Uh, I'll write that down. It's deep, son. Most kids' side characters are asking to be shot out of a cancer-filled cannon, but this one was actually pretty tolerable. Okay, not gosling good, but not short round annoying. Though am I the only one who swears Calamity's his mother? There is way too much of a resemblance there. I'm waiting for no bull on no white horse. It also taught kids a very unique lesson, that being, don't always trust authority. They never got enough evidence to put the sheriff or the mayor away, but they never gave up in stopping their schemes and fighting for what was right. It wasn't anti-law, as obviously our heroes are on the side of the law, but it wasn't saying blindly trust your government either. It's kind of rare you see a show for little kids that says don't always trust the law. I actually kind of admire it for that. There's a lot of action, a lot of jokes, a lot of good voice acting. Did somebody say Tim Curry? And who is this lovely mademoiselle whose beauty makes the sun's rays pale? For a lighthearted bit of fun, it was exactly that. A bit of fun. Looks like they might hit ground in Morse Grass Meadow, don't it? <laughs> no, Cactus Canyon. So if the show was surprisingly kind of decent, how come we lost interest in only two seasons? I can only guess, but my thought is the second season got a little too silly. Even for an idea that was already silly to begin with. On top of the animation looking like it got a budget cut, there was a bigger focus to introduce a lot more villains, and it started to become overload. Most of them looked like they were made not to have interesting personalities, but instead, probably sell more toys. And given the time period that this came out, that seems more than likely. But for the first season, this was actually an okay show. Uh, again, for kids, there's not too much in it for the parents. Imagine something not quite as good as the Disney Afternoon, but kind of in the same vein. It's cute, innocent, and didn't seem half-assed. They tried to make the best with what seems like a limiting idea, and for what we got, it was kind of entertaining. Okay, I'm not gonna demand it return to TV or anything, but it was a fun, if not strange, little show that left a fond mark on our memories. It's definitely worth getting roped into. Plus, it made for a very entertaining arcade game called The Simpsons. Oh, come on! How can you die in a dream? I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember, so you don't have to. That part never made sense to me. Marshall Moo would be furious. <laughs>